Hey everyone, my name is Mike. So I've been busy since the last video. For those of you new to the channel, I've been taking advantage of the coronavirus lockdown to explore a little bit more about what's going on in the commercial space industry. And specifically, I'm trying to learn more about the Starlink Internet Constellation. Now, I'm a hands-on person, I learn by doing. So what I'm doing is following along the steps of what I would need to do if I wanted to hack the Starlink Internet Constellation. Now, I'm not actually going to hack the Starlink satellites. I don't have permission from Starlink or SpaceX, but I'm going to follow along the steps that I would need to do if I were going to. Now, if you haven't seen my last video, I laid out a few steps or milestones, if you will, on what I needed to accomplish in order to be in a position if I were going to hack the Starlink satellites. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. Now, I'm not a nation state, I'm not a country, and I'm only one person working on this. So I wanted to be able to validate my progress as I go. I wanna know that one step is working before I move on to the next. And communicating with satellites in orbit is not easy. But luckily, there are other low Earth orbit satellites out there that I can communicate with. Now, I'm a licensed amateur radio operator, and there are a whole bunch of amateur radio satellites in orbit. And most of those are in low Earth orbit. They're the cheaper CubeSat, smaller secondary payloads, things like that. And the nice thing is, there's a ton of public information out there on how to communicate with them. Now, because they're designed for amateur radio operators, most of them operate in a set of common frequencies used by ham radio operators. The two meter band, around 144 megahertz, and the 70 centimeter band, around uh, 440 megahertz. And so what I'm going to do is start by getting everything working, communicating with those satellites. And then piece by piece, I'm going to swap out my own Starlink work for what I'm using for the amateur radio satellites. And that way I'll be able to prove each step along the way so that I know that I'm, I'm you know, finishing one step properly before I move to the next. So what I've done since the last video is I went out and I got a few bits to, to further equip myself to communicate with amateur radio satellites in low Earth orbit. So the first thing I want to show you is the antenna. This is a directional antenna. These elements are for the 70 centimeter band. And you can see here on the end, it's got a handle. And for a lot of these ham radio satellites, that's how people do it. They use software on the computer to tell them when the satellite is passing and which direction it is. And then you're actually just hand-holding this satellite uh, or this directional antenna at the satellite and using the software to know which direction to point it and which elevation to point it as the satellite passes overhead. And while it's passing, and you're tracking it with the satellite, you're operating the radio to communicate with the satellite as it passes. So this antenna is kind of like a step one. So the amateur radio satellite software would tell you where to point it. My first step is to write my own software initially tracking the amateur radio satellite, but then that same software will be able to track the Starlink satellites once I switch over to targeting them. The next step is, instead of hand pointing this antenna, which for the amateur radio satellites is doable, for the Starlink satellites, they're operating at a much higher frequency. Instead of you know, 440 megahertz, they're operating up around 10 or 11 gigahertz. 
way higher frequency. So instead of an antenna like this, we're looking at more of a satellite dish, just like the direct TV satellites you see on people's houses. Uh, smaller and with a, what they call an LNB to receive that much higher frequency. So when we're aiming it, I need something that will automatically aim that dish. So as I build that, I'm going to be able to attach this antenna to that platform or pedestal as they call it. So as it steers this satellite automatically, again, I can track an amateur radio satellite and know that if this is working to communicate with the amateur radio satellite, that that same mount is going to be able to point my dish at a Starlink satellite. So that's another step to, uh, to proving that everything works before I actually start trying to listen to a Starlink satellite. Now, like I said, this antenna is designed and the amateur radio satellites are designed to work on common ham radio frequencies. So this antenna has the 70 centimeter elements, these ones you're seeing here in purple, and it communicates at 440 megahertz. Now, most amateur radio satellites operate as full duplex. So as I'm sending a signal up, it's simultaneously sending a signal down on a different band. So this is the 70 centimeter band, but this antenna, this is made by Aero, also comes with another set of elements. And these, you can see, are longer. These are the two meter ham band or 144 megahertz. So you can probably see in the video, probably small, but there's another set of holes in my pole here. And these elements go in 90 degrees to these existing elements. So these ones go this way and the two meter ones will stick out sideways. And what that gives you is one antenna that you point at the satellite and you can send on 70 centimeters and at the same time receive on two meters. So that actually needs uh, a radio that can handle full duplex or two radios. So for me, I don't have a full duplex radio, so I'm gonna use two radios. I've got a little tiny handheld here. This is a Yezu VX6. I mean, look how tiny this is, but believe it or not, this has enough power with a directional antenna like this to send a signal all the way out into space to reach a satellite. And most of these satellites, or at least uh, the majority, are just voice. So I'm just gonna be using this radio to send my voice up to the satellite. And for receiving, my other radio is a bit bigger. This is a base station radio, and this is an ICOM 7100 and it actually has a separate head unit. You can kind of see it there. But the nice thing about this one is it also has a USB interface. So this radio can be completely controlled by a computer software program running. So I didn't mention it in my last video, but another complication with satellites is they're moving pretty fast over your head. And they're moving fast enough that the frequency, the, the frequency you need to tune to is affected by the Doppler effect. So as the satellite is coming towards you, the frequency actually appears a bit higher to your radio. And as it passes overhead and then starts moving away from you, the frequency you need to tune to is actually a bit lower than that center frequency. So with this computer controlled radio, what I'm going to be able to do is test out my software, being able to track the satellite and also understand its velocity towards or away from me and calculate that frequency offset to account for that Doppler effect. So I'll be able to verify that that works using this radio when I'm communicating with the amateur radio satellites so that I know it's going to work when I start communicating at that much higher frequency with the Starlink satellites. So 
that's my approximate setup there. So again, that will let me test the software used to track the satellites and compute that Doppler offset. It'll allow me to build and test my pedestal for pointing and aiming the antenna. And then when I actually do switch to a dish, I'll be fairly confident that it's pointing in the correct direction and that it's tuning to the correct frequencies, or at least I know what the frequencies are because the exact frequencies used by the Starlink satellites are not public as far as I know. So I'm gonna to have to be scanning and, and trying to look at big chunks of spectrum to look for signals uh, in the noise uh, so that I can actually find out what frequencies these Starlink satellites are using. So that was my point of this video. I wanted to run you through my process, uh, really outline how I'm going to be using amateur radio satellites to prove a lot of the steps as I go. I'll actually do some videos where I communicate, hopefully, with some amateur radio satellites. And you'll kind of see how that works. And then when I get into the fun stuff of building the software, uh, building the pointing pedestal, I'll be doing videos on all of that as well. So definitely tune in, uh, subscribe down below, click that bell if you want to get notifications when I publish new videos, and really just join me in making the most of the coronavirus shutdown and learning more about the Starlink satellites and other commercial space activities. So that's all for today. Thank you very much.